Good evening, and welcome to another Mothman podcast. We research and dare to discover the truth to questions which science calls unexplainable. So we hope you like tonight's episode, and we're going to be talking about the Mothman himself. Good evening, Daryl. Hey, Amanda, how are you this evening? Not bad. It's raining a little bit, and... Just quarantining still, and <laughs> well, for not your, much. <laughs> for you guys that hasn't heard any of the rest of our podcast, you'll know that uh, Amanda and I both have uh, uh, taken this thing seriously, and uh, I'm broadcasting from my studio in, in my house, and Amanda's coming to you across the phone uh, from her house, and so um, we get outside and can we see each other every once in a while and wave, but uh, that's, that's as close right. as we get. Uh, we're both trying to stay healthy during this this trying time. But uh, tonight, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Mothman himself. Um, the Mothman has been around ever since uh, recorded time. And we even go back to the um, caves of uh, the ancient uh, Americans, Native Americans, Um, and also caves throughout the world. And um, we see pictures of what they call, um, they had different names during different times. The Mothman, the name the Mothman came about in around November or December of 1966 when this uh, creature showed up at Mount Pleasant, West Virginia. The the local news... uh, took upon themselves to name this creature based on the Batman series, which was very popular back in the early 60s and in mid-60s. Um, so spinning off the Batman, they came up with the Mothman because the creature supposedly had wings and looked somewhat like a, a moth, uh, a human moth that was flying. And it You also, know, talking about um, how far back... The Mothman goes. Uh, do you remember when we did the the uh, the podcast on Pazuzu, and we talked about how Pazuzu was actually seen as a good omen back in Mesopotamian days? But he looked like I always thought he looked like the Mothman, and man. he would predict disaster or he would predict good things coming. And he had the wings, and he he looked like what the modern day people have described as this Mothman. Right. Well, but it goes back a long time. Yeah. I, I mean, you can trace it back to the beginning of time, um, as recorded time. It is. So this creature has been around whatever it is, but the, the real creature that we know today that we study today, it came about from a little town called Mount Pleasant, West Virginia, It's a small town with a big history. It has a population of over 4,000 occupants, and the area of the town is around three miles. Most of us would not think of it as a city, but in fact it is. It's kind of like the small community we live in in Clemens. A lot of people don't think about the village of Clemens being a city, but it is is a city. Yeah. Um, It's surrounded by a lush green countryside, alongside the vast Ohio River, and uh, it's, it's surrounded by a larger-than-life legend. As its name suggests, its character is quiet, peaceful, and above all, pleasant. On the surface, mm-hmm. at least, no one would ever th- suspect that this one home town would be the ordeals of the last half century when the paranormal strikes fear into the hearts of many. And in other words, that you wouldn't think that this, this would set the, the stage for a large paranormal event. Yeah. During the latter years of the 1960s, reports began to surface of a mysterious and, and a horrifying creature stalking residents on the outskirts and surrounding areas of the town. Encounters with this entity 
are said to be frightening, at least to one person uh, who is now suffering psychological uh, trauma and has been been traumatized for, for many years after their experience. The first sighting of this uh, entity occurred on the 12th day of November, 1966. And I'm telling my age, but I was driving a, a GTO back in that day. <laughs> <laughs> there was five guys working in a graveyard um, in a local cemetery. When they saw what was to them looked like a human being flying out of a group of che- uh, trees nearby. They watched for a few minutes as it swooped down low over their heads and then took off into the distance. So that was the very first sighting of what they said was a Mothman. Wow. How many people saw it? That was five that was working in the graveyard that night. Wow. I Two. always say when there's multiple people seeing this stuff, Same thing. they're not making it up. Right, they're not making it up. And to them, it appeared to be a man-like creature uh, with mm-hmm. large wings and uh, made a very loud sound, and it screamed like a lady. Uh, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want me to demonstrate? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's, let's just take it as it is. Uh, roughly two nights later on the 14th, uh, a resident was watching his TV when he saw what appeared to be a red light coming from the or was hovering from a, uh, a field near his property. It caught his attention, and uh, so he decided he would investigate it. He realized that the red glowing lights were actually a pair of eyes which were belonged to a tall, what he had called a mothman-looking figure. Now, you got to understand it. This person is calling it a mothman-looking figure, but he had not heard of the five people who had saw it days before. Okay. Yeah. This had not been out in the community. It's not one of those things where everybody's telling everybody else something. So you've got another person that sees the same thing and, and is describing it the same way that the five people saw it in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. And the figure was standing on a branch of trees about a hundred yards from when uh, it probably rose up from the into the air and flew away over the woods, letting out a blood curling scream as it went. So it's got a screaming like wow. voice. A Screaming like woman's voice. Uh, the man had a German Shepherd dog. His name was Bandit. And uh, the dog took off off the porch and started to uh, take off after the the, um, the entity or the, uh-huh. what they call he called the Mothman looking creature. And that dog, right. uh, dog was, um, it never came back home. Oh my God. Uh, a few nights later, oh, actually the 14th, the next night. Uh, two young married couples came running into the local sheriff's office in a, in a state of panic and distress. Um, they'd been on their way back from a double date, driving close to the TNT area of Mount Pleasant. I'll explain to you what that TNT area means a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Mount Pleasant, when they saw a tall gray figure standing next to the road. Um, they reported that it looked like a man, but bigger, possibly seven foot tall, and it appeared wow. to have a pair of wings folded behind its back. So now we've got a close visual of, of two couples that are dating, and they're seeing this That's individual. four more people. Right. Uh, they're seeing this individual that's standing taller than a man, seven foot tall, and uh, with large wings. Uh, I'm sure the Celtics would love to have that individual on their ball team. Uh, ha ha, that's a funny. And, uh, in front of the, the, um, entity was a corpse of a dog. Oh, wow. But they never, they never determined, uh, what the breed of the dog was, but it could have been the German shepherd that had been gone missing. Yeah. As they passed the strange looking figure, it rose into the air and, and proceeded to fly after the car. The guy... The driver stated that he w- was got his car up to 100 miles per hour, but the creature was able to keep up matching the speed of the vehicle. Oh, my so, God. Well, we know now that this vehicle's traveling at 100 miles an hour, and this creature is, is still right beside it. Uh, one of the ladies in the car said that it emitted a high-pitched human-like screech as it flew and that it had a huge red eyes which glowed like a pair of reflectors. 
So here's, wow. they're looking out and they're seeing this thing right beside them. As they entered the town, the creature broke off the chase and flew back in the direction of the TNT area. After this all happened, on the 16th, they held a press conference there in the town. They called in a wildlife expert, and he was present during the meeting, and he offered the explanation that he was uh, to the waiting media saying that the couple had actually seen an abnormal large crane, which apparently had been flown off course of its migration route, and this appeared to be a statement officials uh, wanted to keep down the public panic, so they they made this a, a public announcement. Mm-hmm. But the people who, all the people who saw this said, cranes can't grow that large, and they don't give off a human-like scream, and they can't fly at 100 miles an hour, and they definitely don't have glowing red eyes. So, you know, that, that wow. was something that yeah. the witnesses said, you're just BSing me. You know, this is this can't be the truth. This is not the truth. But Yeah, you know, that's you not know, what we saw. But, you yeah. know, we have a tendency of trying to calm people down, so we throw out anything right. to make it. So that's what they were trying to do. Uh, the report hit the uh, local paper on the 16th of November, and the word of an uh, encounter spread through the town like wildfire. One sighting in particular occurred on the evening of the 16th at around the same time that the first local evening paper was being deposited in the mailbox. So this, this individual hadn't seen the, the, the newspaper yet, so we've got another mm-hmm. sighting. that, that you know. it, um, This was a, a, a Raymond Waisley, and along mm-hmm. with uh, her was uh, uh, Marcella Burnett and her do- uh, baby girl, her daughter Tina. And they were all going to visit this Thompson family who lived on the outskirts of the town. So uh, when they pulled up to the Thompson, Thompson property, the car seemed to have uh, disturbed something. And as they were getting out of the car, they were shocked to see a large, grave figure, bigger than a man, here again, bigger than a man, raising yeah. up from the ground nearby, which they described as having terribly glowing red eyes. Now, here's another three or four people that's seeing this thing. Uh, Marcella was so alarmed that she forgot that she had was carrying her baby daughter, and in a panic, she actually dropped her daughter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so after she realized what was going on and after collecting herself and her, her child, they all ran into the Thompson home and was <clears throat> led in by one of their children. The creature shuffled after them and continued to torment the house by appearing in through the windows. So it was going oh around God. to all the house and looking in the windows. Oh, that would be so scary. Uh, they called the police, but, of course, by the time the police arrived over a half hour later, uh, the entity had vanished. Uh-huh. Um, she, uh, Marcella stated she also lived outside uh, of Mount Pleasant, near the TNT area, and claimed that their uh, initial encounter at the Thompson residence, the creature had visited her home several other occasions, and that she often heard a blood-curling scream in the dead of the night. Oh, my God. She was so upset and so uh, ter- tormented by this. Uh, she um, she had mental health problems and uh, and still is going under treatment for this. Like PTSD, just yeah. about, right? The, uh, you know, that TNT area that I told you about would uh, later uh-huh. become the heavily associated with the Mothman. The TNT area is a large tract of land dotted with small concrete igloos used during World War II to store ammunition. Uh, It is also adjacent to a 25-acre McClellick Wildlife Sanctuary, and the entire landscape is covered with dense forests, steep hills, and riddled with tunnels. So it's a great area for something like this creature to hide and disappear and, and nobody could see it. Yeah, um, you can't search that kind of an area. The press went on to claim that the area attached as homes for the creature during the time of the uh, Mount Pleasant. The, 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 they they claimed that it lived in that area. That's what the press was saying during that period of time. Uh huh. Um, also, during the uh, November of that year, the Silver River Bridge over the Ohio River collapsed, plunging a number of vehicles into the icy depths, killing 46 people 
in the process. Wow. The funny thing is immediately after the bridge collapse, sightings of the Mothman ceased to, uh, altogether, leading many people to believe that the creature was somehow responsible for the tragedy. Others believe that the Mothman was there to warn residents of the upcoming tragedy. Mm-hmm. And, and <clears throat> history has shown that this creature is, is showed up just prior to large disasters. And, yeah. And so throughout history, this is this is something that uh, is believed to be a creature that um, that is there to maybe warn us. It's a mm-hmm. it's an entity. Um, so, who or rather, what is Mothman? That's there, a very good question. Yeah, there were multiple sightings in the area by different individuals who had not uh, re- reported sightings by other individuals at the time that came forward. So what they're saying is there's a lot of people there that saw the same thing and nobody talked to anybody else. So it was it was something that t- that uh, the individuals... People were seeing. Right. And, and <clears throat> it, it's not mass hysteria because there was no other people talking to one another. So when all this took yeah. place, it took place over a period of time where individuals... Um, uh, we're not communicating. Yeah. And it would be hard for a group of people who had no contact with one another to describe the same entity to the T without uh, conversing with one another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about this is a rural, rural I can't say that word, rural area yeah. where right. people are kind of separated. So you might see it on your property, but you you don't have enough contact with you got to realize this is 1966. There's no cell yeah. phones. There's no internet. There's no computers talking to one another. This is... Uh, uh, people are kind of isolated. Right. So you were talking about... And people kind of stated themselves in small communities, um, you know, such as Mount Pleasant and uh, West Virginia mm-hmm. back in the 1960s. It's not something where everybody runs to the next door neighbor and next door neighbor runs to another next door neighbor. It doesn't work that way. They're not the, the, yeah. the property's not that dense. Uh, so one of the theories that which came out of the, the point pleasant experience is that the Mothman is a symbol of impending doom. Well, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's what's being reported. So, um, that's what yeah. we're looking at is the Mothman. You know, I th- I mentioned this when we were talking about doing this podcast on the Mothman. I'm, I'm just wondering if there are any reports before the COVID virus hit, you know, you know anywhere in the world. And that's something know. that uh, we haven't had a chance to research yet, but we will research this. Um, yeah. There's been numerous sightings of the Mothman in parts of the South and Central America in areas where the populations have never heard of Point Pleasant's West Virginia. And these have all taken place within the, the last future, you know, in the, when I mm-hmm. say the, the past near future. Um, and, yeah. and they're, they're, what am I trying to say here? They've all taken, <laughs> taken place in the recent, uh, you know, times. Recent past. All right, there you go. I'll get it out here in a minute. <laughs> uh, some believers theorize that the Mothman was actually extraterrestrial in origin. Sometimes just before the first Mothman sighting, uh, a sewing machine salesman by the name of Woodward Dulleberg was driving on I-77, not far from the area of Mount Pleasant, West Virginia, and he reported an encounter a UFO which spotted his car. And uh, mm. Another fact is that uh, many residents of Point Pleasant's reported paranormal activity in their homes, which causes. Uh, wow, that's interesting. And, and all this ceased after the bridge collapsed. Uh-huh. So it's all tied back to paranormal spaceships. Could it be um, an open portal to a, another dimension? Another I dimension. Mean, there's so many facts yeah. out there that you just we can't explain right now. It is interesting that such a large tragedy happened on the heels of the Mothman appearing. Right. And one of the... This uh, bridge collapse, I mean. Right. <clears throat> and, and because of the movie, The Men in Black, they've, ta- uh-huh. they've tagged this to it. But 
men in dark black suits made appearances in the town on a number of occasions. And that was during this um, this episode with the Mothman. These, oh, wow. These uh, so-called agents from the government would show up, and they, uh, they were titled down the men in black because of the fact of the movies that came out. Yeah. You know, whoever or whatever the Mothman is, there's no doubt that something strange was going on in that small town on the banks of the Ohio River during the 1960s. That's just flat out. Yep. That's all we can say. Whether you believe or disbelieve, you have to admit that there is something out there that we can't absolutely prove or disprove. Whether from space uh, yeah. or from mm-hmm. a, par- a par- uh, parallel universe, this thing can probably see the future. We just don't know. Yeah. Is the Mothman trying to communicate with us in a way that we can't understand yet? The only thing I can say is let me assure you that the Mothman podcast will continue to investigate and provide answers as they are made to, available to us about the Mothman. So with that being said, uh, we appreciate you listening to us tonight, and we will continue to research the Mothman, and we'll continue to research whether he was present during sightings during this time. We do know for a fact that he was present and had recorded sightings prior to the um, towers coming down in New York City. Yep. Uh, the um, In Russia, before the um, nuclear accident, he was sighted there. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> at Chernobyl. At Chernobyl. So, um, and these are documented facts, and who can say that we might not be able to document that he's been seen in the world today, uh, maybe even China before the virus started in the, the one town. So yeah, we will continue to investigate. And, uh, thank you for listening to Mothman podcast. This is Daryl the Mothman and Amanda the Medium saying good night and thank you for listening.